I was putting together some information on the toxicity of the Gulf oil spill and it really got me worried. There's this uh, woman that's talking and you have two videos, one shortly after she found out that her boyfriend got ill and she had the courage to talk about it because BP was basically terrorizing everybody not to say a word about it and she sounded pretty awake and quick and her most recent uh, kind of uh, disaster prediction uh, video she really talks like uh, she's a little bit drunk with slurred speech and then you got this toxicology talking about uh, the Exxon Valdez disaster in, uh, uh, which is many years ago, more than 20 years ago and she simply describes that the people that, that, that develop these respiratory illnesses that feel like they have the flu uh, keep that illness after 6, 10, 12, 20 years and then they die of it. You know, it's a, it's a lethal thing. These, these fumes uh, that they are exposed to when they do cleanup work are toxic fumes and they are killing these people. So it almost seems like there's a genocide going on because, you know, why would you suppress the knowledge of it? Why would you not call simply for the evacuation of the whole area, except for the people on the oil rig that are uh, fixing the problem and that are asked to be brave? You know, why would you even evacuate that oil rig or evacuate the activities in the middle of the storms uh, if it's about such a huge number of human lives that are affected? Because these people don't, they won't re recover. You know, people that fall ill of these uh, fumes will not get better. And uh, it reminds me really of uh, Srebrenica, which is kind of a, maybe a little bit dramatic, but in that situation you also had, uh, well, Karamans, he was uh, the, the, the guy from the Dutch military in, in, in charge, and he didn't really want to die. He said, you're not going to shoot the messenger, are you? you know? Because he, know, uh, he was up against, uh, uh, well, odds that he could not uh, face, he could not uh, resist. He could have put up a fight, but he didn't. So the people were asked to go, you know, the young people were brought to the buses, they dro drove enough and, and killed. Well, the same thing is happening right now. BP is, is putting uh, clean-up workers in buses, they're driving up, off, and I also saw reports that in many cases they don't, because they're no longer, uh, they can no longer uh, kind of avoid the liability to the health of these workers, and of course, you know, that would mean that it would cost money. There would be there would be litigation and there would be processes. So that puts a stop to uh, to endangering these people's lives. But otherwise, they'll simply do it, and it's completely useless as long as the well is leaking. It's completely useless to be fiddling around with booms and stuff like that to help the wildlife because the next wave there will be more oil, and the next wave there will be more oil. You know, and it might even be that that whole well is under such pressure that it's simply never going to uh, be closed. That it's simply not meant, a well of such pressure is not meant to be opened. Now, I'm not an expert and they're drilling relief wells. Uh, and of course, if you kind of uh, can uh, simply catch that oil and, and remove it, put it in oil tankers and, and use it in cars, then, you know, you are force feeding uh, uh, fossil fuel to the world but at least you're not poisoning this whole area. And there's many aspects of poisonous effects because you have uh, basically the oil itself, you have the dispersant, you have the gases, the methane, you have arsenic, apparently because of the oil in the water, arsenic is not removed as easily as possible because usually arsenic is re reacting with uh, 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 geotide, the stuff that's in the ground, so it's removed from the water and that means that now the arsenic concentrations will be much higher. It's horrible. And I would say, well, if the government is not stepping in and removing these people and evacuating them quickly, so the government basically allows all these people to fall ill with this mysterious sickness, which is very mysterious now, but you know, if it's just that's that's just politics. You know, if somebody says this is like saying, well, um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying, you're shooting me. And somebody with the gun says, uh, what do you mean I'm shooting you? Well, you're, you're shooting me uh, bullets in my body. You know, I got holes everywhere. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, how, how do I do that then? Yeah, you're pulling the trigger. You, know, you can keep on the discussion for hours and die. While on the other, you know, <laughs> other conversation could be, uh, you're a terrorist. 
You know why? I, I'm holding a sandwich. You know, yeah, you're. It's a dangerous sandwich. No, you're a terrorist. I'm arresting you. I'm putting you to death or bring you to Guantanamo. It's just politics, and you shouldn't accept it. It's 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 ridiculous to me that there's not an uproar. And I would, if I lived in the Gulf, I would simply pack up my bags and leave.